What's up, everybody? This is Jimmy with Trading Decoded. It is April 17th, 2024, and it's 4.05 in the afternoon. Market is closed. Um, well, this morning when we woke up and in pre-market, SPY was pretty happy. Everything in the top 10 was green. I was all expected to play calls. Um, we had a call scenario in place. But just like the other day, Qs were showing us that they weren't ready to go up. And it was because of that that we were able to get into some pretty early puts that ended up paying us 20%. Some people got a little more, some people got a little less. And we were in a channel for a short period of time. When I say a short period of time, I want to say maybe the first 20 minutes of the morning where the same resistance was holding. And by that time, ADD was already selling off and Qs were putting in lower highs and lower lows. So very quickly, calls became off the table as a trade. And then we had to focus on finding trades put wise, when to get into them and why. So without further ado, let's go ahead and launch the chart and see what we got going on here. So this is our pre-market range here from 504.67 to 505.49. Not a huge range, but a range nonetheless. And we very quickly got out of the top of the range. Uh, and then we started to get on to our three targets. Now, we never made it to yesterday's high of day, which was at 506.50. And uh, coming into the open, what we wanted to do was hold support of... 506.02, make sure ADD is moving up and make sure Qs are holding support as well. So when you go over to the Qs, you saw the very first candle fall right below support. That immediately takes calls off the table. If Qs are ever going down, I'm never playing calls. Okay, to be very, very clear, I'm not going to trade against the Qs ever unless the Magnificent Seven is no longer magnificent and the Qs no longer have a power over SPY, okay? As you look at ADD, ADD at the time was moving up, okay? Now that didn't last for a terrible amount of time. Let's go ahead and take a look at ADD at the open. ADD started to move to the upside and I made the comment while I was looking at the Q saying, guys, Q's fell below support. And it's holding as resistance. This might be a great opportunity to take puts. You don't have to take them. You don't have to listen to a word I say. What we were looking for was the Q's to make it down to their um, pre-market midline at 432.08. We happened to get into the trade right around 932. We were looking for an exit at, at, at the pre-market midline. We got there. In three minutes later, okay, 9.32, three minutes later, here we are. You get out of the trade. That was a 19% winner, depending on when you got in and when you got out. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but three minutes, quick trade. We retraced back up. Now, we didn't quite make it to the yellow resistance line here on SPY, but guess what? Qs were right back up at resistance. Now, your stop loss on this trade which we talked about as well, was candle closes, if you're trading the Q's chart, above 433.08. Why? Because you have your next resistance above this orange line is right there. So we never touched it. We never closed above it. This was still holding as resistance. We're looking for the move back down to the same line. Okay, this is when we were talking about that channel. You had the opportunity to get in. You can get out at the same place, almost the same exact trade as before. Then... ADD starts to pick up a little bit, which is causing SPY to move up to the same resistance. And again, if you were trading the SPY chart, and some people did get stopped out on this particular trade, this is the second trade I took. I took the first, didn't take the second, took the third. If you're playing something other than in an unproven line. So when I when I when I look at this line of resistance, 50602, okay, clearly it's acting as some sort of resistance. But any candle that is closed above that stopped where? Right here. The same double top we were looking at on the queues in their pre-market, right here. That was the stop if you're on the queues. It's got to be a justification for a potential stop. And if not, here, a candle close above this would be your worst case scenario. Now I say candle close because that's what I do. I've been wicked out of too many trades using mechanical stops, 
but I also don't lack the discipline most of the time to stop out where I'm supposed to. Okay, now truthfully, in this trade right here, I was a little nervous on this candle, but Q's were putting in lower highs. ADD was getting, had they started moving south yet, 945? Yeah, so ADD hadn't started moving down yet, so this was a little bit concerning at the time. But as long as the Qs weren't closing back up above, and like I said, the Qs were coming off of lower highs at this time. Okay, lower highs are bad for calls. So I'm not interested in calls. I'm just hoping that the Qs continue to move their way down, and down they went uh, because I believe that the Qs are going to affect buy in the same way. It's not 100% of the time, but that's what gives me the confidence to take these trades. Q's was putting in, at this time, its third lower low. So we were at resistance on the Q's, okay? Both right here at this line and the trend line, if you're drawing that, looking for the SPY to follow. Now, were we looking for Q's to get down to this particular line like it had been, or because we're coming off a lower low, or lower high, I tell people all the time, guys, the supports that have been holding thus far tend to become a little bit weaker if we're coming down to it from lower highs. The selling pressure is building. The selling pressure is building, which is putting more pressure on the buyers or the support level here. At some point, I assume, statistically speaking, that that level of pressure is going to get too great for the buyers or the support, and the support's going to be what fails. It doesn't happen 100% of the time, but it happens most of the time. That's good enough for me. So when we're looking for a target below a known support level, it could possibly change simply because we're putting in lower highs, right? For the, fee, for the people in my community, you know I say this all the time. Guys, we're coming off higher lows. I would expect this resistance up here to fail, not hold. I wouldn't buy puts when we get to this resistance coming off of higher lows. Okay. Likewise to the downside. If we're coming off of lower highs, coming down to a support level, my belief is, is that the support level is getting weaker. It may not break this time. If we put in another lower high, you're putting even more pressure on that support line. My ultimate belief is that we are going to eventually crash through support, not bounce off of it. Now, if we're channeling up and down, I would respect resistance, respect support, resistance, support, resistance, support. Equal pressure all the way. Lower highs, more selling pressure. Can the buyers hold it? I don't know. I'm betting no. We get into puts because Qs are at resistance. Spy's at resistance. Got a little sketchy there for a minute. Ultimately, Spy comes down. Now, this here was an exit when the Qs were touching this line first. And then we were hoping to get down to the next blue line. At least I was at 431.66, which is what, we're, what you were at here. Sorry. And it kept going down. Now, whether you made it to pre-market uh, midline on Qs or Spy, rather, you had the opportunity to squeeze more money out of the trade. I got out here. Got in here, got out here at a very similar support level, and uh, that one was only 17.5% winner. That was it for me for the day. Tons of opportunities on the chart today if you played to the downside. Um, pretty volatile, a lot, of, uh, a lot of movement today. It was beautiful. Uh, we started, we continued to trend down, so, uh, Q's continued to trend down. Now, as we were moving lower and we get down to the pink line, anybody who was inputs, I said, guys, we're getting close to the pink line. I don't hold through the pink line. I would recommend that you don't do that. If we can close below the pink line, I said this right around this time. I said, if we can close below the pink line on the cues, I think the cues are going to make a decent sized move to the downside. Okay. That happened here. The cues closed below the pink line on this particular candle right here. And then it ran down. Now, we don't know where it's going to stop. We hope it's going to make it all the way down to 428.17. But the minute you start to see these big wicks on the bottom or you take out any of these levels of resistance to, this, to the upside, you got to stop out of the trade. OK, so you got in here, but you got out here because Q's or SPY hit their pink line. So you had the opportunity to get the majority of this move simply because SPY was running into their yesterday low of day. Now, this pink line is extra big today because my 
people in our community wanted me to make them fatter. That's why it's there. It looks ridiculous, I know, but it is what it is. Um, and just like I wouldn't hold through any of these, I'm not in any of this trade, doesn't matter, but I still wouldn't hold through the pink line. I don't do that. Now, if you want to get in, if we close below it, fine. Again, just like the Qs, if we close below the pink line, I expect a whole bunch of buyers to turn to sellers and at least allow this move to continue down forever. No, never, not forever, but for a quick jolt, maybe. Okay, so we pull back to resistance, come back down. No, no trades we're taking here because we were blowing through resistance levels. But as long as we stay below the most recent lower high, you're still in a downtrend. We come back down to the pink line. Anybody who was in puts, guys, consider moving your stops down. We don't know what's going to happen if we touch it, when we touch it, if we touch it. But we get a close below it. This is a potential entry. Next, next trade brings you straight down, and we make it all the way down to $500.90. Now, we've been talking about hopefully getting to $500 uh, since yesterday, which was uh, awesome. We pull back once again to resistance, still in a downtrend, but this time we put in a higher low. And Jimmy, would you buy puts at 501.76? No, I wouldn't. Well, why not? Because we're coming off of a higher low. I don't expect resistance to hold, okay? I don't expect resistance to hold. Plus, take a look at where the Qs are at this time, okay? The Qs are at 1150, okay? So we're all the way down here. Qs are at resistance, okay? That would be an ideal time to buy it, but because we're coming off a higher low, not for me. Now, if the Qs could stay below that line and we can reject a known resistance level here, we'll have to see how that works out. So, Qs stay below that line. We say, hey guys, Qs are holding resistance here. This might be an opportunity to take puts. Uh, hopefully, we're going to make it down to at least 427.60 on the put, on the Qs, maybe even down to the next line. Um, nonetheless, this was them hitting that level uh, on their, their first support. And then this was them getting down to the, their orange line. And if you held to it, um, SPY's next line all the way down here. Again, I'm not in any of these trades. All we were doing today was looking for reasons to buy puts. And what you're really hoping for, whether you, you subscribe to the higher, low, lower, high scenario, I choose not to buy puts when we're testing resistance off of a higher low. That's just, that's not me. So I'd prefer that we close below the most recent higher low before I'm interested in puts again. Now we have counter trend traders. This trade is for those people. For me, we close below this, which we did here. I'm looking for that move to make it down to the same support that we had last time. So you can get into this candle, get out here, or you target the next lower line down, or whatever you want. Okay, I'm done trading at this point. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, but all day long, pullbacks, Breaking supports, making it down to the next support. Now, at this time, I'm at lunch, so uh, there's nothing to do here. Uh, when I get back from lunch, people were interested in the potential to buy calls. Fine. I wouldn't do it unless we closed above the pink line. Here's where I make a mistake, but I want to show you guys why. You have to look at more than just SPY. Okay? So I'm leaving this trade here because I only was looking at SPY at the moment, completely ignoring cues. Here's the problem with ignoring the cues. Fine, we're closing above a line of resistance. The next resistance up is a minimum of 502.57, hoping for the double top here at 502.87. The one thing that I tell everybody every day, especially in the morning when we're doing the call put scenario, is if you're coming up to a line of resistance or you want to buy calls on SPY, make sure Qs are not at or near a level of resistance first. Where do you think Qs were at, the, at this candle? If you guessed near resistance, you're right. And I'll show you. So at 155, 155, here are the Qs getting very close to resistance. There's no room for this move to continue up. Okay, I didn't know it was gonna stop here. Even if it moved up a couple more cents to make it to that line, it's not worth taking the risk. I put this arrow on this chart before I double check the Q chart. That's why it's there. I'm not gonna delete it. 
We were looking for this move to continue up to at least 502.58, which it did get to, but we were hoping for the double top over here, which it didn't get to. The stopping point on this trade was if we close below this split candle. Okay, so a tight stop, no harm, no foul, although it did make it to the first profit target, just not very much move. If you waited for the candle close, there was no move. But the more important part, guys, was that Qs were at a resistance area. We should have skipped this trade altogether. We can't hold or break through this resistance here. We come back down and uh, things just got a little wonky. There's nothing here to trade. I don't touch this stuff this late in the day. I never do. And therefore, because of that, I can't recommend trades for other people. Now, and when I try to, uh, and I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone, mistakes happen, right? I made this mistake, I'll own it. I don't know if anybody took it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but what we did say, because uh, that same resistance that kept us out, um, we were saying if Q, the second part of that trade should have been if SPY is above the pink line and Qs are above 428.17, then you're good to go. Okay, well, we broke through that line at 428.17 on the Qs at 242. I think SPY was above that line at that time as well. So this could have been a great entry candle as well. And uh, that would have worked out. But other than that, not much else to touch in here, in my humble opinion. Uh, as you guys know, I'm, I'm done well before lunchtime usually. So oftentimes, if you watch my videos or look at my charts, you're not going to see uh, arrows and circles after 12 o'clock because I don't feel comfortable trading then. We have another trade room in our community that trades all day long. Um, I just... I'd have to break every rule that I follow when I take my trades in order for myself to comfortably trade later in the day. And I don't do that. And I can't recommend other people do it because it's pretty hypocritical. Uh, with that said, I hope you all had a fantastic day today. Um, if you found any useful information in this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. If you'd like to join our Discord community, well, we have a link down below in every one of our um, videos. We'd love to have you. As soon as you get into the server, having put in no credit card information, no payment information, nothing, you will start your seven-day free trial. Just come in and take a look, guys. It may not be for you. You may hate it. It may not work for you. It may be confusing to you. It may be too fast-paced for you. I don't know but it may be a great thing for you. And even if you don't stay as a paying member, for those seven days, I still spill all of the beans, everything that I teach every day in these videos, in the room, you're, you're amongst paying traders the whole time. Um, so I can't tailor a room just for the temp patrons and then tell you guys one thing and then tell my paying members a different thing. You're in the same room, <clears throat> same room together. Maybe you walk away with some information that is useful to you, even if you don't become a paying member. That's okay with me. I'm trying to help you define ways to increase your odds of winning. That's all. That's all I'm trying to do. And if you think that that's valuable enough to pay your hard-earned money for, I'd appreciate it. If it's not, then please don't spend your money on our community. Don't stay. You can stay for free if you want. You just lose access to the paying content. That's all. All right. With that, we're going to wrap it up. Hope you all had a fantastic day today and uh, till tomorrow. I love you guys. See ya.